What's up, dudes? And welcome to Kingdom Hearts. This is a video that I've been wanting to make for so long now on my channel, and we're finally here doing it. If anyone knows me, they know that Kingdom Hearts is hands down my favorite video game series of all time. Before we dive into it, if you're a returning viewer and have not subscribed yet, please do so. It'll help the channel grow, and I would greatly appreciate it. I'm not too sure how long this video is going to be, so I definitely recommend you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I don't know what it was, it's just something about Kingdom Hearts really grasped my emotions. When you first end up on Destiny Island, meeting your friends, setting off on a new adventure, ending up in Traverse Town, meeting with Donald and Goofy, it was so cool. This game felt like a new adventure, but also nostalgia at the same exact time. Because I'm a 90s kid, so I grew up with all the 90s film classics, and it felt like I was actually playing in all those movies. And one thing that I actually learned as I got older was that I was going through a lot of the same stuff that Sora was going through growing up. For example, Sora was 13, and I was 13 as well. Which is kind of cool because I've kind of grown up with the series and with Sora. And not just that, but I actually had my first girlfriend at the time. And just like him and Kyrie had their relationship, me and my girlfriend had our relationship. So there's just a lot of similarities that I connected with with the series. And at that point in my life, everything was just perfect and magical. And I had just moved to a new town, meeting new people, meeting new friends. It was great. And in this video game, I felt like I was also on a new adventure. So it was kind of as scary as my real life was and entering this whole new phase of my life. This series also kind of helped me cope with that new adventure being like, hey, it's okay, trust the process, if that makes sense. The biggest things too that I love about Kingdom Hearts is all the nostalgia, but there's so many certain parts. And I will say that I'm gonna have a few spoilers in this video. So if you have not played the series yet, I definitely recommend playing the series first and then watching this video. But anyways, the main thing that I loved about Kingdom Hearts 1 is not just the nostalgia or this whole new adventure, but the morals. Sora gets broken up from his friends and what drives him to find them again is love. This game is all about heart and soul and love for your friends and your family and the core at why you do what you do. Looking back on it, Sora went through so much to save his friends and the people that he loves. You got Riku that's got taken by darkness, which I can connect of so many times in my life because I'm not perfect and I've had a lot of dark times in the past with substance abuse and whatnot. I don't want to get into all that, but you know, I'm free from all that. So that was like my dark times that had a grasp on me, but I was able to see the light and let go of all that. Thanks to God. But I will say though, that this is honestly a really good game that any teenager or anybody at the time of life should play at some point or another, because it really brings you back onto what's really important in life and what you should cherish. In Kingdom Hearts, it's not about the money, it's not about fame, it's not about fashion, it's not about materialism. It's seriously about heart and soul and enjoying the people and your experiences and giving it your all and doing what you really love in life and fighting like hell for it. Yeah, I honestly feel like as if this series unlocked this new view of love in my mind. Like there's love for your friends, there's love for your family, there's love for the world, but there's this certain inner kind of love that just exists that I can't really explain, but Kingdom Hearts really puts that into perspective. To anyone that's ever played this series, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. And man, I will never forget the way Kingdom Hearts 1 ends. That's actually the first time I've ever shed a tear at the end of a game. It was intense. At the end I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Like that's how it's gonna leave off? Like what? I need answers, I need to know what happens next. It was the best and most beautiful cliffhanger I have ever experienced in any movie, any manga, any anime, any show, anything at all. That was the best cliffhanger I've ever experienced. I love Kingdom Hearts so much that I remember playing it, replaying it over and over and over again for months. And then finally, we got Chain of Memories, which was not exactly what I was wanting, but it was still good for the story-wise. I'm kind of I'm gonna kind of skip that one. But Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, and oh my gosh, that was an ultimate game changer. That was insane. At first, you're playing as Roxas, and you're like, 
who the freaking donkey is this guy? And who are all these people? Like, why should I care about these people? You know, like, who are they? Like, what's going on here? But after the first hour or two, you get so connected to Roxas and his friends. It's insane. I love how Namora can take any character and give it that whole Kingdom Hearts charm and vibe and just instantly connect you with all these characters. That's another major thing too that I want to talk about in this video is how much you feel for these characters. I have never felt this way about anybody in any video game or movie at all than I do with Kingdom Hearts characters. You get into their minds, you get into their souls, you actually really feel for them. This game will make you feel so many emotions and it is so beautiful. Even the people that are involved in the Organization 13, the bad guys, the villains, you even feel for them as well too because some of them don't want to be there, but they have to. But yeah, I'll never forget the intro of Kingdom Hearts 2 and them sailing away on the train and that being the end of that little segment, being like, wow, it was only like two and a half or three hours playing the intro and I felt like I already experienced the whole game right then and there. That's how you know it's a good game, is when you play the intro of the game and you think that like you got your fill for the game. It's ins it, That was insane. I don't really have a favorite Kingdom Hearts game because it's so hard to choose one. If I really had to, it'd be number one because that's what got me into the whole series. But every single game I absolutely love, for its own reasons. And then again, after Kingdom Hearts 2 ended, everyone's back together and you're like oh man this is such like the perfect moment it's exactly it tied off the way the first game ended into the second game and it was just perfect it was absolutely beautiful and then some more time went by and then you have 358 over two days and you have all these other games that came out as well and all those games are definitely amazing like for example 358 over two days as well as birth by sleep those trios are amazing. I love how Nomura works in trios. He has Roxas, Sora, and Riku. And then he has Ventus, Aqua, and Terra, which is from Birth by Sleep. And then you have Roxas, Axel, and Shion in 358 over two days. And I will say, man, oh my gosh, 358 over two days messed me up. I can't tell you how much I got connected to those characters. It was insane. That ending messed me up, dude. I'm, I don't want to spoil anything, but if anyone knows the ending of 350 over two days and the person that passes away, that really hit me hard. It felt like as if somebody actually really passed in my life that I actually knew in person. Like for weeks, I was like, oh my gosh, I still can't believe that happened. Like what lies with the series? Like how is how are you going to introduce this character? And then, you know, man, that's just insane. I'm trying not to spoil anything for you guys, but I definitely recommend you play it. It's like beautiful tragedy. It is amazing. And then you get Birth by Sleep and that whole crew, and you're like, man, Namora just doesn't stop. Like, how does he do it? It is so cool. And all the worlds that you travel to in Birth by Sleep are all beautiful. This is just, uh, that's a beautiful game right there. It really is. And again, everything ties into like people splitting up and then fighting to get each other back and some friends get lost in the darkness and they fight like hell to bring them out of the darkness and it's just, oh man, it gives me chills thinking about it and how powerful love is, you know? Like that's what it all comes down to, is love. And what drives you to do what you do, at the core of everything is love, you know? And that's what I love about Kingdom Hearts. And that's why I still love it today. And then, of course, you get to Kingdom Hearts 3. And man, that was freaking crazy. I'm sure everyone that's played that game, they're probably thinking, oh, it's not the best one, it's not the greatest one, blah, blah, blah. I actually really enjoyed it. The world building was beautiful. The graphics were amazing. That was a blast. But I will say the ending was the biggest emotional roller coaster I've ever experienced in any game. There was so many loose ends leading up to number three. And the way they just freaking hit you with 20,000 different, you know, tied loose ends at the end, your emotions are just flying all over the place and then it throws you into it like battles left and right after you just had your freaking heart broken and you're over here tearing up and you're supposed to battle this new boss and you're like wait i need time to process all this like what is even going on it was the biggest most epic ending ever and then at the very very end you're still left with what the heck what is going on i need more answers where is this even going but I will say that I'm trusting the process. I still know where we're going with this. I really hope that Missing Link 
answers a lot of unanswered questions, but I'm leaving that up to the creators and the developers because I trust them. And I love Nomura's vision for this series and I will always be there for it. And I'm so grateful and glad that I've been able to grow up with this series and understand it. And it's just had a huge impact on my life and the fact of like how to love and like what I cherish in life and what I look forward to in life and what I strive to be in life. I will say that this game, moral wise and everything, will bring you back to square one on the person that you want to be. Because that's life, you know, like when you're living your day to day life, it's easy to get off the path and, you know, kind of stray ways and have your dark phases and go through times where you're uncertain about a lot of things and whatnot. And it kind of turns you bitter, you know, it kind of turns you into this person that you know you don't want to be. But whenever I jump back into Kingdom Hearts, it just, it brings me back to square one and being like, this is what's important. This is what life really is. This is how to love. And most importantly, this is how to love yourself. I truly believe that video games have a strong impact and can be so beneficial to mental health when used in moderation, of course. Yeah, man, this series is just beautiful, straight up. I can't even tell you how many worlds you get to travel to. And, and like I was saying, being a 90s kid and experiencing all these 90s movies, but in a video game and you get to play them, that is so freaking cool. And one thing that I love about this game too that others find a little bit overwhelming is the amount of story and lore. There is so much going on in this game. Like you really have to keep up with it. I know it may seem kind of overwhelming and whatnot, but when you really dive deep into it and you fully understand it, there is so much thought put into this game. It's insane. Yeah, this is a series that I definitely recommend everyone playing at some point or another. I know the graphics and the gameplay itself might seem a little bit outdated, but if you're into Disney and Square Enix, Final Fantasy, all those guys, you're gonna love this series. I will say though too, one quick point that I wanna make is that, but yes, these games are all definitely worth your time. And to anyone that's been involved and invested in this series, they know what I'm talking about. I am so excited to see what lies ahead for this series. I don't know what to expect, I really don't. With The Missing Link, I've only done so much research on it and I kinda wanna leave that out of it. I wanna go into it kinda blindly, just so I get the full experience, so I'm not spoiling anything. But yeah, I am so grateful for this series. I mean, it's played a major role on who I am today and just how I view the world and everything and why I'm so like passion filled and so driven to do certain things. And it's like awakened this part of my mind that's just like, you know, like Sora says, you know, like even in the darkest of times, there's always a door to the light, you know? So no matter how things are going in your life, how dark things may be, whatever you're going through, good or bad, there will always be a door to the light. And that is beautiful. And that is why I love Kingdom Hearts, I still love Kingdom Hearts, and why I will always love Kingdom Hearts. So that is gonna be it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys wanna talk about it, please let me know in the comments. I love talking about the series. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did and have not subscribed yet, please do so. And with that being said, hope you guys have an amazing day, enjoy gaming, keep gaming, have your fun, live life, enjoy life, and God bless you guys. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.